Are you interested in learning how construction projects come together? Well, 30 of my VIP students are getting a tour of our recent eight unit new build right here in Toronto. I'm taking them around the building, answering any questions they have about what's going on with this project and all of our future projects. Check it out. The way that our project works, and, and for those of you that have done the, 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 my, my course, you know this, we talked about different kinds of construction projects, right? There's um, CCDC3, which is essentially a contract that means this is like you're gonna give somebody some money and they're gonna complete the whole thing. It's called kind of like design build. And then there's CCDC5A, which is a very common construction contract, um, which basically means that I'm going to be the general contractor the construction manager is going to act on my behalf, but I contract directly with the trades. So the framer here does not um, contract with the construction manager. They contract with me as the owner and the construction manager is basically my advisor saying, here's who I think you should use. They review all of the contracts. We do use CCDC contracts on all of this project. And then basically they say, this, pro this contract is good to go. You can sign it as the owner and they'll sign it as, the, as the, the trade contractor. The other option is to work with what's called a CCDC 5B contract. And that means that I contract with the construction manager. The construction manager then contracts with the trade contractors. So you pass a little bit of the liability onto the construction manager in that situation because basically they have to be um, accountable to you. Whereas in my situation, and I'm, the trade has to be accountable to me directly. This project will cost us about $2.2 million in construction hard costs. So total, total square footage is around 6,000. I think it's 6,200 square feet, something like that. Soft costs are gonna be somewhere in the range of 600 to $800,000 in that range. Development charges being the biggest one. Right In the city of Toronto, when you add units to the market, you get development charges. Uh, so those are about $50,000 per unit. The $2.2 million is basically like our cost to build here. And we bought this property for $2.2 million. We'll be in it for about probably somewhere in the range of five and a half million dollars. And this project will probably appraise at around six, six and a half million dollars. And we'll have the $4 million, $3.85 million construction loan. So the investor money will take up the remainder of that space. So we raised $1.5 million for this tra transaction in investor account. For electrical needs, did you have to go up to 400 amp? This project is like, it's so fun. On, I think it was Thursday, uh, we, we recognized that we have our 400 amp service coming in from Toronto Hydro and the mechanical engineer somehow missed it that we had 400 amp service and they designed and for a 600 amp service. Um, which is Toronto Hydro doesn't do 400, uh, 600 amp service. It has to be done privately. So we're right now just going through, it's not a difficult thing to do. Like we're right on the border. I think we're like 450 amp or something like that. So we'll just need to make a few little modifications. Um, most likely we'll have to pull out um, uh, the, the stoves and turn them to gas. So we'll do gas stoves instead of electric, which I prefer. I love gas stoves, but um, that's probably the change we'll have to make. And then we'll be 400 amp service here. Does that change to gas affect your efficiency? For so that's what we had to check. We had to say, does it adding gas stoves now take us outside of the 40% efficiency? Uh, we're waiting for that answer. The alternative is if that comes back and says we can't go to gas stoves, we would most likely then remove the dryers and we would go with the combi units. Have you guys seen those? Yeah. It's a washer dryer combi unit. Um, so. It's like a European unit. Uh, I, I used to have one when I lived in Japan um, and it's, it only runs on a 120 um, outlet and it runs on a, it just need a drain for it. It actually doesn't have a vent to the exterior and it doesn't need a 40 amp, um, or sorry, a 30 amp circuit for the dryer. So that's an easy thing that we can, we can reduce down. Yeah, so the heating system in this building will be uh, ducted um, mini split um, units, basically. So it'll be duct work, but it'll be a heat pump, and that's what gives us our efficiency, right? So heat pumps in every unit. There'll be a, um, an exterior condenser on the balconies, 
they'll be right behind you guys where you're standing. That's where the mechanical and the washer dryer units are gonna go. Um, and there's uh, each individual unit has its own uh, furnace basically, furnace and AC. And it's electric, so we can put it on their electrical panel and then they'll pay their own utilities. So we actually technically right now don't have gas in this building um, because everything is electric. How long is it going to take you to get that 400 amps? We've been at it for a while. We submitted our application a while ago. They're putting in a new pole out front, which is really nice uh, because if they didn't put in a pole, they're going to put in transform. They have to put in a transformer in to go to the 400 amp service. And if they put it on the pole at either one that's there, we would have to trench all the way in concrete to bring in the 400 amp service. So the fact that Toronto Hydro is gonna add a pool right in front of our house is saves us like uh, probably $50,000. That's just a coincidence or? No, they, they suggested it actually, okay. yeah. Um, and so basically it, 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 takes, it can take anywhere from eight to 12 months to get 400 amp service. So you really have to plan um, when, you're, when you've got 400 amp service coming in your building. What was the cost of buying a project that's essentially ready put, to put a shovel in the ground versus one that's not. So I'll, I, I can tell you those numbers exactly because we bought our Glen Lake project. It was a single family dwelling and we went through the process of converting it and getting it ready for building a 10 unit building there. We paid $1.85 million for that one. This one we paid $2.2 .2 million. So that's the Delta. Now the people that bought this, I think they bought it for around a million, maybe even less but it took them about a year and a half to go through the process of getting it legalized. But the rules were very different then than they are now. They also did that during the pandemic, which committee was like really slow during the pandemic and all that kind of stuff. So for us now, it doesn't make sense to buy a project that's already ready to go unless it's at a deep discount. Otherwise, I know the process, we can just buy it as an existing building and then go through the process ourselves and get it ready for construction. But, um, you know, the thing about these projects is, uh, you know, I don't like, uh, no offense to anybody if this is your strategy, I'm like, it's, it's fine. If I don't like doing cash for keys and that kind of stuff, I'd rather buy a building that's like a single family dwelling or something that's vacant and then I can just do what I need to do with it. I don't really have, like to go in and try to deal with taking tenants out of a building to then to do it. It's not that it, I don't think it's like, it's not an ethical thing or anything like that. It's just a matter of, it's just a hassle. Right. Yeah. It's, you know, and then you're at their mercy as to whether they want to move out and what the cost of that is. So I like these projects where we're either buying a property that's vacant um, and somebody doesn't necessarily see the potential in it. Um, or, you know, somebody's uh, got maybe one or two units and it's it's kind of vacant as well. I hope you enjoy this video. And if you're interested in learning how you can be a part of a development project like this, check out my website, darrenvoros.com for information about my upcoming courses and everything to do with the development. You can follow me on Facebook and Instagram where I post regularly. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on Tuesday.